favorite TV show. Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. I think this is my uh, 51st episode. Again, you can type the program name Basket Starfish, our uh, language core uh, in the YouTube. You can find the, uh, all the last episodes that I talk about uh, different formation of alphabet. Tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the oral tradition that is actually a state in our writing system. Uh, sometimes we have to uh, pay attention to very little details and uh, my research has been going on for more than 20 years now and I'm explaining language and its sound uh, through an Asian woman's perspective and it also uh, presents to you a traveler's point of view instead of an academic view uh, even though I spend a lot of time in our um, libraries you know but then I tend to take up a lot of cues from the real life, you know, the remote places that I have lived in, in the mountains, in the desert, you know, so um, uh, now I'm going to start, as I said, I'm going to start uh, talking about the uh, my research by showing you the um, yeah, the form of the basket starfish. Um, this is what I uh, propose, you know, the uh, human language, and you know, all share one common core, just like this basket starfish. This is the core, and every single one of us, you know, every single culture should be just a branch. We are not separate tree families, so uh, we, if we uh, stop looking at it like that then we will not have human hierarchy we because we all stand on equal ground and um, all these you know uh, way of looking through uh, language through a uh, Eurocentric view needs to be changed okay so um, today's uh, topic is about the multiple layers of meaning the concepts that uh, pass on you know through generation and generation through the visual and oral tradition okay and here is a map I show you. Uh, I think um, I don't. I'm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this Göbekli uh, Tepe, this uh, ancient site in Turkey. And actually, in the same area, they found a lot of these T-shaped stones. You know, which they uh, said that um, it is more than twelve thousand years old uh, stone carving. The most important one is this one Göbekli Tepe, which which means the pot belly um, uh, uh, mound okay so it has a lot to do with the fertility with the uh, why they call it like that it just uh, become like the pregnant woman's belly okay so uh, I will show you the shape of the stone and then I will show you a lot of early writings that somehow echoes echoes the form of it. Okay, this is Sumerian and uh, pictograph, and then it become a cuneiform. It just shifted 90 degrees like this. Uh, we know that it has a meaning. It means the being of something comes to be, or the divine properties that enable the cosmic activity. This is something very, very important as humans begin to realize uh, question their existence okay but uh, it seems that you know a lot of the ancient writing if they stay in the pictograph stage they seem to retain you know certain elements that we call those shapes I will show you one Chinese writing it actually um, uh, has a, also a T shape with the hands going in for us it means a childbirth as you can see is two hands delivering you know what's uh, uh, stored inside this worm area and and then uh, we also have writing like this again it echoes this T shape and again also inside this T shape is another smaller T shape exactly like the Sumerian writing with drips coming down for us you know uh, this is the writing that uh, begins to our writing of a source a fountain or a spring okay you can somehow you know this is just not a normal uh, water fountain it has to do with the idea of a human source or human spring like this because the t-shape echoes you know the words of childbirth and then um, the words uh, mutate into different forms you know and 2,000 years ago uh, it attained this form and and if you look at the real uh, biological form of a 
female, you will see that the fallopian tube is actually retain that shape itself. It seems that the ancient has a very, very clear uh, knowledge of our uh, human um, autonomy. Okay, so, uh, but the writing also uh, goes on in Chinese, you know, uh, when we add the rope uh, indicative, um, determinative next to this word, it has the sound of sin. Sin, okay, sin actually means a threat, of course, you know, it has to do a lot with the earliest matriarchal line, like the Jewish people, you know, the line is still coming down from the female side. But then if you read uh, both the source, the spring, in Japanese, it will be sen. If you read the same uh, word threat in Japanese, it's also sen, okay? It seems that the Japanese also retain some of the very ancient sound. Uh, one way or the other, the fountain of the threat is the way the ancient refer to our um, motherhood, okay? And, but then uh, the, those T-shapes, you know, somehow, you know, has underneath the T-shape, there are all sorts of stone carving. Some of them have actually a kind of sperm-like or snake-like forms, you know. There's a lot of discussion about that. But no matter how you look at it, either we look at the word semen nowadays or the serpent or the serpent, they are both also start with either the, 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 the S writing or also the sound of sir okay uh, the semen and the also serpent you will see that uh, it also coincide with all this uh, the thread and the source okay and actually in Japanese you know the um, the word for sperm is actually seiki so you will see that you know the ancient uh, word sounds actually scattered all around all of us only preserve part of the whole truth so it's only by combining all uh, languages together that we can find the origin and again um, again I have to clarify that a lot of the sound I use here is a Cantonese sound not Mandarin but I do use Mandarin once in a while you know to compare the mutation and the consistence of certain sound okay now let me go back to the to chase it and then again this is sir in uh, Sumerian it means to live you will see that part of this uh, writing is still you know exist in here okay and then you will see that is echo in the Chinese writing as well and then um, the Latin word sir up to this day is means self you know you um, this comes to a very uh, metaphysical understanding of the ancient they begin to understand that there has to be some spiritual side so a self for us to exist and it is very interesting the Chinese writing for self is actually like this can't you see that is really an S shape right there. Now we write it like this. You know, we flip um, the, the 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 writing the to the other side uh, as a mirror image. But then um, the sound also has mutated into something else. But if you uh, lined up all this together, all these things, you know, you will see that the whole picture, the T shape from the early uh, time, actually consists, you know, the meaning of some kind of ancient creation. So let us look at the ancient ancient creation symbols again this t-shape from this Gerbekli Tepe in Turkey now and then the Sumerian writing and and it actually uh, we were told that you know it has a sound of meh and then the Chinese actually this word right there means childbirth also have the sound of mean okay and then uh, of course this again is the fountain the thread and then this is something female this is, oh sorry you know, I should go back to do it slowly okay this is something uh, female and then um, the hieroglyph side if you look at it there uh, they have a god you know, a uh, male god though. It's called Min right there. It is uh, the fertility god. Look at this. This is actually uh, the um, the sign. Look at it sideways. Okay. So the ancient actually it uh, was uh, it's very very versatile in looking at things from a different point of angle. So uh, we are a little bit more rigid than the ancient. If you look at it like this, it's actually uh, like the ejaculation. This is the fluid of a female. This is a fluid of the male. So at 
actually in the ancient time it has a lot to do with the sexual act okay so if you look at both you know both you look at the male and the female both we hold this t shape in one way or the other so there is no point you know trying to argue you know whether the female goes first or the male goes first but um uh, but uh, i will show you also in the um Chinese writing actually you will see that this is also the male part right there you will see that it's also similar to the t-shape right there so uh, as you can see you know it exists both in the male and the female part but as time went by you know this sexual flow and liquid you know become more and more hidden and uh, to replace that uh, you, we can actually start looking at things differently this is also again Chinese writing okay because with time goes by uh, we were told that these are actually air coming out from the mouth it, it starts to represent air and and it starts to represent words speaking and this thing become more and more, more curved it become a wrong shape it also take up another pronunciation as w as like when you say a word in chinese is one or wa okay and that means word in english and then it means the airflow so as you can see this is actually a very big division between the very ancient very uh direct uh worship of the the, the sexual worship of the creation to the later you know the, the biblical you know the words of god you know uh concept of the early creation so uh, you will see that this is actually how the Bible begins you know at the speed like that when we begin to look at those you know instead of the uh, reproductive part of, of the male and the female and we interpret the same t-shape as the word spoken from heaven okay so um, once again I'll bring you back to the S form because you have to pay attention to these three elements on uh, in nature one is the water the, the water flow and the other is the snake form and the other is the thread form all these you know either they become a snake or they become the the, the, the source as I have explained to you you know the quelle in Latin and also in uh, German both means the source also so all these can mean kind of a source even you look at the water flow or the thread or the snake okay so these are the important symbol early symbol of continuity abundance and fertility these are all jammed together so it's very difficult to separate them one by one okay so uh, once again I show you some Chinese writing this has the sound of Sun or Sun and um, because of this thread right there this is the holder of the thread for us is the descendant the grandchildren and then um, this is has the sound of how means uh, what's coming after you the follower and or again the descendant again this is the thread you know uh, with the uh, unseen energy the a symbol dangling after it so we can either uh, express it with this s sound or the h sound you know they both means you know descendant and then uh, the hieroglyph also have this rope thing you know it definitely it's to tie up the whole herd of animal and it also has the sound of sa which is echoing the sa, uh, the sun and sun right there and then if we look at pictorial forms you know you will see that some stone carving in Yemen you will see that this female right there obviously she has a long long braid right there you will see that this thread is constantly uh, you know showing you know the fertility sign because you know it leads to this uh, little baby female as you can see okay female right there so for a time actually the female Male took on a much more uh, important position before the patriarchal society hit hide all the matriarchal uh, influences okay so again you know the heritage threat and the fertility thread was very important um, as you can see the hieroglyph also have either the H sound represented or the sin sound right there this is actually this part right there what is dangling from there um, and you will see that this is again this is Min the fertility god as you will see that this uh, symbol is constantly there to show you that these are the holders of those fertility thread and also you can also understand 
this this frail as the three you know split of the of the thread sometimes it's, it is a two ply thread sometimes it's a three just like the Chinese writing so these uh, symbols are very very common in ancient time in all uh, ancient cultures from East and West okay and again you see the mummy will also uh, uh, wearing this thread or you will see the goddesses either they're wearing this um, uh, the, the belt or they're wearing this thread you know on top of their head all these were very very important fertility symbol they were not just there for uh, for decoration okay again I will show you the S and H company in all the languages but this time I'm showing you the polar meaning once again you will see the Chinese has the three ply thread to show the H high okay and or the sin both uh, has to do with the thread of the rope okay the hieroglyph has this H and the S as well same as as the Chinese and then the Sumerian has the ash you know this is also a rope you have the S and or, or, or the she okay and then the ancient Hebrew has it a very straightened way this is an H or they have it horizontally also have an H so um, now I show you the uh, as I said the polar meaning the thread either is to link or to bar okay this is actually you know the lock of Tutankhamun's uh, tomb you know the very famous Egyptian pharaoh so you will see that the lock is actually made of rope only if you place it differently okay so um, also you know at the same form you will see that the fence you know before the fence was made you can also use a rope to use it as a fence okay but if you use the writing to express it as the ancient Hebrew this is also actually means hindrance okay so I will show you not the H now I will show you the S okay Hungarian saw actually means lock and then uh, the son in German actually means a fence you will see that you can refer it to the writing very easily but the sound is actually very similar saw and son and also the Chinese have the saw, look at this, saw actually exactly means the lock or the Chinese actually has a son which sounds very much like the, the German son. Um, if we write it this way, the son, can you see this? You know, it actually means a fence. Uh, we are very pictorial, okay? Or if we write it like that, as you can see the door with a bar right there, the son, it also means the lock or also the verb to lock up something as you see exactly what's being done right there so as I said you know if you look at the reality it is easier to understand pictograph you know not by the the, the reading map that you use now uh, you have to go into reality to understand ancient writing okay and then um, this is the meaning of to lock or the lock itself sound okay so as you can see all these sounds are very very consistent even the Arabic has the word sound sound actually means either fence or it means to defend or to protect as you can see all this object were used to defend or to protect so um, can you see that we all share this very ancient sound we pay too much attention to the grammar and the grammar actually separates us into different languages you can see if you we pay attention to sound we will find a lot more about our common core of the languages okay so um, again this multiple layer of meaning in writing languages and I will show you the evidence of ceaseless communication since ancient time again I used a rope to show you uh, the Chinese has high means uh, has to do a lot with the tie or the thread and this who in, in Hungarian uh, this is Hungarian runic okay before they use the Latin writing they write it like this the who is means a string the hutter means a border as you can see it is still a thread you know but then I will show you the S and the Z sound system okay and then I show you again and again even these days if you learn how to throw threads one is called the S drill the other one is called the Z drill when they throw together it become a real real thread okay but the ancient uh, Hungarian old rune, runes actually has a bunch of things which is 
very very pictograph first of all this is the 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 the, the writing itself okay the pictograph but nowadays after they use the latin uh, alphabet you can transform this to here it means sal is a thread okay and this c right there is zen means thread as you can see the chinese sin uh, you will see that this three uh, lines is actually this part right there or they have again the 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 writing like this and they transfer the senior it's a chord and then this is a tribe you will see that this pictograph actually transferred directly to those writings right there and then the old hungary rune it also have this now you begin to see that it's like joining two things together uh, it has a sound of choda and it means hurt or the chalat actually means a family but then the chinese actually has a very um, similar word we we pronounce it as jo okay this cholat choda and this is jo we uh, for us it means a tribe it's actually very similar in meaning but i want you to see this this is actually you know a symbol uh, representing this trailing together this is to tell you that we bind a bunch of arrows together as one that means a tribe look at that um, and i will you see in the following slides you know how this uh, exists in our oral tradition in all cultures okay but before i go in the old uh, Hungarian when it goes on um, the, the uh, thread goes thicker it means saw right there as, as I said it's a log saw in Chinese is a log and uh, so mia and so ku actually uh, in Finnish it actually means tie or to lock look at the consistency of the sound even we write it either in z or the s the sound is actually very much the same if you read it in reality okay so again I show you the unity of multitude how the ancients started to to tell you you know how the multitude goes and uh, uh, the other is a reality this is a real Chinese writing uh, actually it's part of my name is sin or sim okay sin or sim actually means uh, uh, you can understand it as Greek okay as y s y n s or s y m okay either the synergy or the symphony actually binding two things into one this is an indicator right there to tell you to bind all arrows into one arrow once again it's jok as a tribe and the hungarian as, as uh, has this symbol is a thicker rope it's choda is a herd and then jolat is also a family so you will see, compare this two sound even though it seems to spell very differently but the sound is actually very very similar and we actually have a rope tidying something to the to the field itself it means chok is a herd you will see you will hear these sounds are very very similar chok chok choda okay and then it means a livestock many or to accumulate something or we have a very direct symbol chok means uh, to bind to control the chok and the chok uh, you can see very clearly it's binding things together like a like a the thread okay and then the turkish chok actually many means many means the multitude once again you know the ancient already have a very very consistent sound meaning you know to bind all the uh, multitude together as the chok okay again i will show you this the arrow and then to bind things together cholat chok but i will show you this i am sure you know this very well this is the very early you know uh american seal this is to bind all the 13 uh, ropes together and then uh, this is a very common thing for people to tattoo it all means the symbol of strength and uni un un uh, unity it always used to arrow as a symbol itself even your great american seal right there you see the eagle's uh, left claw holds onto 13 confederations you know as a form of arrow and um, because you know uh, this uh, 
comes down in oral tradition again and again and um, by telling people by telling uh, different cultures all tell the same story by binding things together we become strong okay so if you compare this ancient Hungarian runic with the ancient Hebrew H you know you will have the English word hold or the horde or the host. The host you can describe a battalion, you know, a multitude of soldiers. And somehow, you know, when they say choke, you know, when you don't use the arrow because the arrow was used in a very positive way, but this one, you know, has been used, you know, by the fascists um, as a symbol of power and strength also. Here they use stick and, and, and an axe to bind together to also to show the, the unity of the strength, okay? So um, here I found it in the internet, you know, that, that uh, there is a prayer, you know, that how we become unbreakable. This is the prayer from a rabbi. He says that the Talmud and also the African tribe, Maasai tribe, also teach that stick alone cannot, can be broken by a child, but stick in a, a bundle are unbreakable. I can tell you that even when I was a child in my book, you know, in Hong Kong, back in Hong Kong, I was taught, you know, from in, from ancient China that arrows, a bunch of arrows were the symbol of unity. So this is not only limited to the Talmud or the Maasai, it's uh, ancient, it exists in ancient Roman legend, it exists in all ancient cultures. And so it keeps saying that if we are bundled together, if we stick together, we are unbreakable. So I think uh, in this uh, political climate these days, you know, we should actually look at this, you know. I, I like this sentence that as it says that but rather we look at each other as our moral trying that binds us together so by only uh, binding us together as that arrow that uh, followed on from uh, for thousands and thousands of years you know in different tradition we can understand you know our political situation is still the same like the ancient time okay so uh, I have finished today's thing talk, but uh, I'm going to talk to you next time about a very interesting writing, the complementary and polar meaning of symbols by using two Greek symbols. One is the split and the other actually means to turn. Uh, so, uh, so don't think that they all mean the same thing, okay? So... Uh, okay, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope I can get my point across about the uh, unbreakable by joining together. And if you look at all this ancient writing from Chinese, from Sumerian, they seem to share very, very similar tradition. And uh, we can only uh, understand the origin of a language by uh, comparing all things together, but not by separating it. So it coincides with my theme today. Uh, so the linguist should be uh, combining, not by separating, okay? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Sarah Chiu. Please uh, type in YouTube and watch.